Hello, this is Mike from Applied Motion Products. Welcome to part two of our video tutorial series showing how to get up and running with an Applied Motion Products Ethernet IP integrated motor in Studio 5000. In this installment, we'll build on the program created in part one and show you how to get the motor spinning and look at how our freely available and unlocked AOIs are structured so they can be modified to your own needs. If you'd like to follow along, the AOIs I'll be using can be found in the support section of our website, appliedmotion.com, under application note 46. The input and output assemblies are detailed in the Ethernet IP appendix of our host command reference, which can be downloaded at appliedmotion.com slash hcr. And the EDS file for your particular drive can be found under downloads on the drive's product page. Okay, let's start by reviewing where we left off last time. Again, you can see here the same PLC, the Compact Logics L18ER, connected via the yellow cable to my PC. And we have the same TSM 23X 3G IP integrated step servo motor connected with the orange cable into my PLC and they're both powered off of a 24 volt DC supply. And if we switch back to our Studio 5000 screen we see where we left off last time. So the input assembly is up and running, the AOI is working, you can tell by the changing um, holding current variable here that we're actually communicating with the drive and getting fresh information. And the status code shows that the motor is enabled and it's in position. Now, let's work on making the motor move. So I'm going to go offline to do this, and I'm going to import a couple of add-on instructions. The first one I'm going to import is the jog, the amp jog move. And in order to jog the motor, um, again, this is outlined in the host command reference Ethernet IP section. But in order to jog the motor, we need to issue a jog start command over the output assembly. We also need to issue a jog stop command over the output assembly. So I'm also going to import the amp normal stop of AOI. And the combination of those two together will allow me to start and stop the motor in a velocity mode. Now that those are both in, I'm going to start a new ROM. I'm going to go to my add-on element group and import the jog move and the normal stop AYs and go ahead and tag them out. Then we'll go to jog instruction. The input, I'm going to point to our input assembly. Data array. And the output is going to go to the output assembly data array. And now this is new from the last time, from the last tutorial video. Now we're using both the input assembly, which has all the information coming back from the drive. Also we're using the output assembly, which is what um, the PLC uses to send data to the drive. RPI again is 20 milliseconds, just like last time. And I'm going to create a new tag for my start bit. We'll call it drive start. And I'm just going to hard code in. 5 RPS, 50 RPS squared for my XLD cell. And I'm going to tag out my normal stop AOI. Drive stop instruction. Point to my input output assembly data arrays. RPI and create a bit or a tag for my stop. I call the first one drive start. I'll just call this one drive stop. Okay, now we're going to right click, verify wrong. No errors, no warnings. We're good to go. So I'm going to download it to the PLC and I'm going to turn on my webcam. We'll make sure it's switched back to remote run when we're done. And again, you can see here the data from the input assembly is fluctuating, so you know we're good. So now we are going to toggle the drive start bit. And the motor stops spinning. 
Now, interestingly, when I toggle it off, the motor keeps going. This is why we added the drive stop bit. So I'm going to toggle drive stop. I'm just going to use the control T shortcut here. There we go. And drive is stopped. So I can just do that back and forth. Start it. Stop it. And notice it's always these rising edge transitions on the bits that actually kick off the AOIs. So now let's take a look at how we might actually use this, use these tag names in a real program. So I'm going to go offline. I'm going to turn off my webcam, and then I'm just going to add in a quick ladder showing how you might go about using these in your program. So I'm going to add a wrong, and I'm going to go to the bit element group. I'm going to add an examine on. We're going to call it start jog move. I'm going to add in a timer. I'm going to call it start jog timer. And I'm going to add the preset at 3000 milliseconds, which is going to be three seconds. So the way that this timer works, just really quickly, the accumulator is zero. As soon as this timer gets enabled, the accumulator is going to count up every millisecond. It's going to add one to the accumulator register. And when the accumulator register equals the preset, it's going to trip the done bit on the timer. So this is going to give me a three second timer. And now I'm just going to add in a little bit of supporting logic to make that all work. I'm going to check the start jog timer enable, and I'm going to make sure that it is not done. Not start jog timer not done. And over here, I'm going to energize the drive start output, which will cause my rising edge transition right here in the drive start or in the uh, jog AOI. And then I'm going to add in a ladder to check when my timer is done and turn off my drive stop. So the output I'm going to energize is drive stop. And the condition I'm going to give that is start jog timer not done. So in this case, I'm checking if it's not done, I'm doing the start. And if it is done, I'm doing the stop. Okay, I'm going to right click, verify wrong, that all looks good, communications, download, and I'm going to turn back on my webcam so you guys can actually see the motor moving in a different place so it's not over the timer. Okay, and we're up and running. Let's just verify that our input assembly is moving. Oh, we got to go back to run mode. There we go. Now our input assembly is moving, so now we're good. Let's look down at our timer. Everything's good. So I'm going to do a rising edge on this start three second job. You can see the accumulator counted up. I'll do it again. You can watch the accumulator counting up. When it gets to 3,000, the motor's going to stop. If I leave it high, as it counts up to 3,000 and passes 3,000, it's going to get the normal stop very quickly. But because this is still true, it's going to just blow right on through and keep going. So you're going to see these three second, these ticks every three seconds where the motor stops very quickly and then starts right back up again. And then I can just pull that low, and it'll expire the current three-second timer and stop. And I'll send another rising edge to three seconds. And that's it. Okay, so now you have some basic movement commands working, and you can see how you might implement it in your own program. And the last thing I want to touch on today is a somewhat more advanced topic, so bear with me for a minute here. I mentioned in the first video of the series that I would address that RPI input number that we add into the AOIs right here. So I'd like to do that now. 
First, just a quick review of what the RPI actually is. RPI stands for Requested Packet Interval, and it is the agreed rate for implicit communications, which are defined in EDS, between the drive and the PLC. And if you look, if you recall in the uh, Ethernet module properties, we actually define the EDS, or I'm sorry, we define the RPI right here. From the drive's point of view, the drive is committing to sending a new input assembly every RPI interval and processing the output assembly from the PLC on the same interval. From the PLC's point of view, it's expecting both to see a new input assembly on every RPI interval and expecting the drive to process the PLC's output assembly on the same interval. So for our AOIs, um, the input assembly side is clear, right? And so if we go back and look at the Look at this input assembly AOI here. The drive is sending information and the PLC is processing it. Our AOI doesn't really care how often it's received. It's just parsing the tags that the PLC is processing. If we look in the controller tags here, we can see the demo motor input assembly. It's just a 14 um, D int data array. And then if we go into the local tag, on our main program, we can see the demo motor input assembly. This is the output of the input assembly AOI, and it really just takes those same 14 um, dints and puts them into more usefully worded dints that we can use later in our program. So the input assembly doesn't care how fast it gets the information, it just gets us. So that's why we don't have to specify in any of these input assembly or status code AOIs what the RPI is. It's totally transparent for these two AOIs. The output assembly is a different story. Some commands which require sending information to the drive may take several output assembly cycles to set up and execute. As an example, to hard stop home, which is going to be the topic of the next video, you need to send over several velocities, accelerations, decelerations, etc. before you send the HS command to kick off the move. And for each command you send, you need to set up and hold the command in the output assembly for at least the RPI interval time for the drive to be guaranteed to have digested the command and set up and hold the idle state for at least the RPI interval time before you can send the next command. So with that in mind, let's open up this AOI and kind of take a look at what's going on. I'm going to go offline because it's a little bit easier to do. So I'm going to right click, open instruction definition. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant open instruction logic. So we can see here a lot of ladder instructions, setting up scaling, stuff in the output assembly, managing the control word, etc. But what I really want to focus on here is rung one. And in this rung, we set up some timer presets. So the comment here, make sure the Ethernet IP commands are maintained long enough to catch at least one RPI cycle we maintain signals 30% longer than the nominal RPI. That's really the key to what's going on. So these timers are taking the RPI number you entered and multiplying it by 1.3, which effectively adds 30%. So our RPI is 20 milliseconds times 1.3, gives us a preset that's gonna go into these timers of 26 milliseconds. And the variable names, local command off timer and local command on timer um, dot pre in both cases give us a clue as to what's happening. These are the timer presets for the command word on time and command word idle time. Every time we stuff the output assembly and pull a control word bit high, we're going to wait until that timer preset expires, then pull the control word back to the idle state until that timer preset expires. That extra 30% buffer that we're multiplying in is really just the buffer to guarantee the drive processes the output assembly correctly. So a support question that we've been asked goes something like this. If I program the RPI when I set up the module, then surely the PLC knows what the RPI is. So why do I need to enter it again in every AOI? And it's a really good question. Um, the answer is really twofold. So first, different models of PLC store that RPI information in different locations. And second, when you have multiple drives on the system with different RPIs, it gets even more complicated. One of the guiding principles that we used in developing these AOIs was to keep them as generic as possible across as many different models of Allen Bradley PLCs and RS Logics and Studio 5000 programming environments as possible. 
So as a result, we've opted to require you to enter the RPI into the AOIs instead of trying to figure out programmatically which RPI we're supposed to use. And that's it. You are now moving your motor using the Applied Motion Products Ethernet.IP drive and your Allen Bradley PLC in Studio 5000. And hopefully you understand our AOI structure a little bit better and what the RPI is just a little bit more than you did before. The AOIs I used can be found in the support section of our website, appliedmotion.com, under application note 46. If you'd like more detailed information about our Ethernet IP implementation, the input and output assemblies, etc., the Ethernet IP appendix of the host command reference document is always the best place to start. You can find the latest version at appliedmotion.com slash hcr. In the next video, we'll cover sensorless hard stop Holman, and in future videos, we'll be exploring things like adding multiple drives on a network. If you have any questions about our AOIs, Ethernet IP communications, or motion applications in general, please reach out to our applications engineering team through our website at appliedmotion.com, email us at support at applied-motion.com, or just give our apps engineers a call at 800-525-1609. Thanks for watching. I hope this was a helpful video. If you have any other topics you'd like to see covered, please leave them in the comments below or let our apps engineers know when you talk to them.